Hey guys, this is uh, Mocha Boy from Marcy Groups. Um, I wanted to go ahead and document this um, this new build that I'm working on. I just got a fancy new package in the um, in the mail today. It took about three and a half weeks, but I finally got here. It's a uh, tricopter set from Spain from a company called Quaternium. It's called the Tricoptex. Um, we're going to be unwrapping that in just a little bit, but before I do that, I wanted to go through and document the uh, entire power system and all of the other components. So I'm going to step through um, every single one of these pieces so you can get an idea of exactly what it takes to uh, to put together one of these kits. Um, in no particular order, I'm just going to start here from, from left to right. Uh, there, there was a lot of setup work involved. Um, earlier on I wanted to make sure that everything was ready so that by the time the tricopter got here I could just start slapping components in. So uh, a couple of things that I wanted to do ahead of time, get the ESCs ready. So these are the, uh, the Hobby King Blue Series 30 amp uh, flashable uh, ESCs, great ESCs. They use uh, NFETs. They use the uh, the NFETs, and um, this is what it looks like with the <clears throat> with the shrink wrap off, and that's with the heat sink off. Uh, programming these to program these, you need something called um, a USB ASP programmer. These are available on Hobby King site and and on the, on eBay for about five bucks. Uh, what you also need is an adapter though, and this one's a little bit trickier. Uh, the, Hobby King also does sell an adapter, but that adapter is about 20 bucks. Um, you know, I have a ton of equipment here, so I said, let me give this a shot and see if I can make one. Um, what this mold is, is um, this is a thermoplastic called Instamorph. Let me see if I have it around here somewhere. You can pick, uh, you can pick these up on Amazon, about four or five bucks, 12 bucks, depending on how, how much you want to get. You just toss it in some water, boiling water, about 140 degrees, and uh, leave it in there for a minute, and then it's completely moldable. And then it sets and cures in about, I don't know, five, six minutes. You can even speed it up by throwing it in the fridge. So you, you mold that up, smash it onto there. You refer to the pinouts um, to figure out which pins you need to, uh, to contact. And then what I did here was I took these microscopic pogo pins I doubt you'll be able to make them out on the video, but um, yeah, I took these pogo pins and a number 72 drill bit and um, installed those pogo pins uh, in exactly where they needed to be. Uh, reset, VCC, ground, SCK, uh, MOSI and MISO down the bottom. So yeah, if you can get this uh, up and running, the reason that I wanted to do it this way, because this goes right on and then be because I made it a little extra larger, it just registers with the components. Just pop that on, hit flash, 30 seconds, you're done. Uh, one of the other things that I did here, I pulled off the <clears throat> the motor leads. Uh, since it's a tricopter, we're going to need uh, motor wires just a little bit longer, maybe about 8 inches. So picked up some 18 gauge wire. Now this is going to be a little bit of a, a gamble. Uh, I probably should have picked up 16 gauge wire or even 14 gauge wire, but uh, I wanted to try to save on space if possible. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But even if I do, I mean, that's not a big deal. I can always swap that out. Uh, what else? What else? Um, some bullet connectors. I am going to be doing bullet connectors because I, <laughs> I will crash. It's inevitable. And I will have to replace components. I don't want to have to be soldering out on the field. Um, across the top row here, we're going to be powering these with uh, NTM 2826 uh, 1200 kV motors. Uh, these are available again on Hobby King for about 12 bucks a piece. Uh, you do need to pick up the adapter pack, and that comes with the motor mount, the uh, prop adapters, and all of the screws. Now, the only thing I can tell you is if you're going to buy these, buy a few of them. They're only a buck or so a piece, but um, they are having some issues with quality control, and some of these are drilled off center. So you may have to go through two or three of those before you find one that you like. Um, I'm going to be using smaller props than most people would. I'm going to be using 8x4. These are carbon fiber props from RC Timer. Uh, it's about 30 bucks, and you can get a set of um, uh, about four of them. And so that's eight propellers total. And it, there's one that's configured as clockwise, and then another one is counterclockwise. Over here on the side, we've got um, digital servo, TGY113MG. I, can't remember the exact specs, but I believe it's about a two kilogram servo, 
Um, there should be plenty for what we're trying to do. You know, these are only five bucks, so even if I have to swap these out, it's not a big deal. Uh, one of the first things I did, though, was uh, to take the servo wires out and solder in a longer harness, because this is going to be going from the tail all the way to the flight controller. So that's just some heavy gauge uh, servo wire that's twisted up and ready to go. Uh, back over this way. So this is a, a line conditioning filter that I've um, built out of you know some spare parts sitting around. Uh, it's a JSTXH3S terminal, and that's a male terminal, and that goes straight into the battery tap like that. And um, once you turn that on, power light, and you've got two 12 volt, 12 volt uh, outputs. Um, this is so that I can power, let me see if I can pull that out. This is so that I can power the, uh, the camera and the uh, video transmitter all off of a single rail and not have to, to bother with a separate flight pack. So this is very handy for that. Um, there's a Let's see, a 35 volt, 470 UF capacitor in there, 12, me 12 millimeter toroid with about uh, eight turns of servo wire. That's just a three millimeter LED and a micro switch. Because uh, I like, you know, if, if I just decide I want to fly line of sight, I can just uh, do so without unhooking anything and just flip a switch and off goes the, uh, the video pieces. So <clears throat> um, this is my... <laughs> My handy dandy power distribution panel. Um, yes, you can buy a circular one or one, any of the ones from Hobby King, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's nothing more than just a copper plate. Uh, so I took um, my Dean's connectors because I have everything run, running off of Dean's connectors. And um, this is a dual sided copper board, copper PCB board. You can pick these up at uh, Radio Shack for about six bucks. They're about that big. So, you know, one of those plates is enough to make probably 20 or 30 of these. So I'll be um, soldering the uh, the battery wires from the ESCs directly onto both sides of these. There's an, there is another component that I'm going to be using, um, another set of components. It's a uh, resistor divider uh, set. So uh, I don't have uh, I'll have those documented elsewhere. But that's for voltage sensing. I'm not going to go with a current uh, sensing setup on this rig because it's it's just overkill. I don't need to know the current, but voltage is is very handy to know. Uh, so moving on to the flight control systems, let me just move over here a little bit. <clears throat> moving on to the flight control systems, we're going to be powering this with a version 2. Point, I'm sorry, version 1.1 Cryos all-in-one flight controller. We're going to be loading this up with uh, Mega Pirate and the latest version of that. So that's uh, two. I think Alexi or Sir Alex is, uh, has released. Um, I believe it's 2.9 release candidate 5 so we're going to be loading that up but by the time I get this all built up he'll probably have the uh, official release out so we'll be running 2.9 of uh, Mega Pirate on here and then there's a uh, Cryos CN06 GPS uh, you know it's it works <laughs> it's a tiny package you know they've worked out all the issues with um, you know with the settings and this is this just goes well with the Cryos you just plug it in and if you're running MPNG uh, it'll just work. Uh, this is a Minim OSD. This is what's going to be powering the uh, the OSD solution. Now this is one of the um, older boards. Let me see if I can get a focus on here. So this is one of the older boards, but um, and you'll notice that because I don't see a regulator anywhere on here, and then the uh, the solder pads to power. The, the analog side from the digital side is uh, is soldered. Now I have a couple of these and they're they're pretty bomb proof. They just work. Um, and as you know, this isn't an actual OSD, not in the sense that like RIMZB or ESD, Easy OSD is. All this does is to, it's a packet sniffer that's hooked up to a video chip. So as it takes the Mavlink traffic in, the uh, video chip takes all that information, overlays it on the video stream, and then outputs it to the camera. So, great little solution. This is about 12 bucks. <clears throat> now for telemetry, I'm not going to be running telemetry on this, but I, you know, for wireless configuration, I've got a Bluetooth uh, setup here. There is some additional setup that you have to do with this, but I will, um, I'll document that in another video. Uh, it has something to do with changing the baud rates, but no big deal there. Let's see, what else do we have here? So, yep, we're going to be powering this off a, a Nanotech. 3300 mAh. Uh, it's 35 to 70 C. You can get these for about 27 bucks. 
um, a ready-made RC 480, uh, 480N. This does come with the um, configuration buttons on the back. And an interesting note about these, if you do decide to go with this camera, they come with wide dynamic range and backlight compensation off. So one of the very first things that you do when you get one of these is configure those. You're going to need to um, to turn those on. It's going to be like somebody turned the lights on. But excellent, excellent cameras, really great value, and a great company. Don't I can't say enough nice things about ready-made RC. So for you know further down the line, GoPro Hero to uh, capture all the flight video, and then over on this side, we we're going to be powering this with. Uh, for control, at least for the first part, uh, you know, for the first set of flight tuning, we're going to be using a TFR4-B FreeSky fast capable module because I'm going to be running this off of a Futaba 10CHG. Uh, now, the reason that I wanted to go with this particular transmitter is because these are capable of CPPM. So as you can see, the jumper's already in there. <clears throat> CPPM comes out of channel 1, and then RSSI comes out of channel 2. So that's pretty much all you need. Bombproof, full, uh, full range uh, receiver. So you can get these for about 34, 34 bucks at Altitude Hobbies. Again, another great vendor. Don't have enough uh, nice things to say about them. Um, it's a homemade Cloverleaf 5.8 gigahertz uh, antenna. Um, these are documented all over the internet, but you know, thanks to uh, Alex, aka I Be Crazy, you know, he's he's put these into the hands of mere mortals like myself. So, uh, thank you for that. And uh, we're going to be powering this off of a couple of different solutions. But just to start, we're going to be using the t 250 milliwatt um, video transmitter from Fat Fat Shark. Um, and then for FPV, we're going to be using the Fat Shark Attitudes. Um, really great purchase. They're a little pricey at uh, 350, but if you're just getting in, it's a great place to start. So I'm going to cut right there and uh, just clean up all this and see if we can get going with um, the unwrapping of the frame. Um, let's see where this came from. Jose Luis Cortez in Valencia, Spain. Very cool. It's like Christmas every day. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. First things first. Let's get this weighed. Yes, 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 I know you're unstable. Alright. Grams. 410. Okay, well, that's workable. It shouldn't be bad. We're going to be shooting for 1,200 all up weight anyway, so... Uh -oh. Okay. Alright, let's get some measurements. Now this does come pre-assembled, at least some components. So that should help to get us up in the air a little quickly. Ooh, very nice. Okay. Okay. Now this is a folding frame with uh, it's a 120 degree sweep on the on the front there so that's going to be great for FPV and um, these aluminum booms these are a little tricky sourcing uh, one of the first things that I did when I looked at this was uh, tried to see if I could find a, a supplier of these because just in case you know for the inevitable crash I'm going to need some um, okay so top plate bottom plate. This is the vibration mount for the, uh, for the camera. 
probably have to figure out a solution there for getting the GoPro on there nice. Uh, let's see, what else did I need? Okay, I mean, that looks pretty straightforward. Let's take a look at the servo mechanism because this is the part that I couldn't seem to find any information on. <clears throat> So that's the yaw mechanism. I guess motor's going to go on there. Servo's right there. Let me grab. Okay, so took a bit of a gamble here, but I uh, didn't want to be waiting for this when this came. So. If you watch Flying Rookie's videos, he uh, he's using, I think, the HS65 MG. Okay, so this is going to be a little tight. I was afraid of that. That's okay. I mean, that's not too terrible. I can just file that down. Oh, wait. Me? Okay. This might actually fit just right. Well, that's going to take a little bit of work, but then again, you know, what in this hobby doesn't? Um probably just have to file off the edges a little bit just to get that in there. No big deal. And then we'll have to take a look at the servo links. Okay, alright. Not too terrible. It's just a little bit of extra work there. Um, there's not really any documentation for any of this, but uh, it's okay. We'll be, we'll be documenting this now. Alright. These look like the motor plates. Okay, we'll be playing with those. Yeah, good. Looks like everything's here. Probably going to have to throw in a couple of extra screws for some uh, for some extra modifications. Uh, these look like three or four millimeter screws. Yeah, that's it. Good. Not too many surprises. Get this build started and um, post those document uh, post those videos a little bit later on. Thanks for watching.